Today, I'm in beautiful Santa Ana. I was having lunch today at a restaurant called Playground, so I thought I'd take a few minutes today and talk about marijuana and how it acts in the body. If you remember on the previous episode where we talked about the lung and we talked about smoking, how air takes that path through your mouth, down your trachea, to the right and left lung, and then to those balloons, that's the same path that molecules that you smoke take, whether that molecule is marijuana or whether that molecule is something like another drug that you smoke or even vaping, for instance. Let's focus on marijuana. What is it? Marijuana actually is an abundance of molecules within that tree. There's actually over 60 different cannabinoids within that molecule, within that tree that you're smoking. The main ingredient is tetrahydrocannabinol, which is marijuana or cannabis, which has been used for over 10,000 years because some of the properties that it exerts, which are anti-pain, anti-nausea, anti-anxiety. Those are some of those properties. When we get down to marijuana, as it travels down that path, it diffuses across that same membrane, that lining of the balloon, to get in your bloodstream. Where does it go from there? Well, there is an endocannabinoid receptor system within your body. There's cannabinoid receptor one, and there's cannabinoid receptor two. The difference is where they're present within your body. Cannabinoid receptor one is present in your brain abundantly. It's actually more present. It has more abundance than the opiate receptors in your brain, which we'll get into at a later date. Cannabinoid receptor two is present on your immune cells. So let's talk about the immune system a little bit. The immune system is a system within your body that is naturally there to fight infection, whether that infection is a virus or a bacteria. There's two parts. There's a natural or innate part of your immune system which fights things right away. Then there's an adaptive part which has to manufacture certain proteins and certain antibodies to be able to fight infection. Going back to the cannabinoid one receptor, which is abundantly present within your brain. There are a few areas in your brain where it's present, where it likes to act. One of those areas is the amygdala. That's the emotional center of the brain, so to speak. Uh, there's the nucleus accumbens, which is the reward type of center. And then there is also the hippocampus, which is responsible for short and long-term memory. So when you are smoking marijuana and that THC crosses that membrane, what it looks for in the bloodstream are those receptors. And again, those receptors are in the brain. And so it may either enhance your emotions and may give you that feeling of being high or it may also tone it down depending on your genetics. The second receptor, cannabinoid 2 receptor, as I said, is abundantly present on the immune cells, more specifically on the adaptive immune cells, the cells that need time to work and manufacture proteins. The B cells, they are cells that basically make your antibodies that are shaped like a Y in your bloodstream. That's where it's present the most. And there is evidence that it may tone down that response, which can be bad. And there's actually evidence that people who smoke marijuana or eat marijuana may get infected more than patients or people who don't. And that's something that people need to understand and know. But we are, as scientists, trying to take advantage of some of the other positive properties. The anti-anxiety, which we prescribe to cancer patients, Marinol, the anti-pain, same reason, same patients, the auto-inflammatory calming down of the immune system, we're looking into that scientifically to see if there's any benefit. The problem with the drug is that it does get abused and you do develop a tolerance. The tolerance is you need more and more of the drug to have that same effect, which can be a problem. But there are both positive and negative effects of marijuana, and we're looking into this scientifically. So again, I thought I'd take a few minutes today, explain that for you guys, and based upon your comments and your thumbs up, I can take whatever topic you would like to research, and we can talk about that in the future. But I wanna remind you guys, as physicians, we build that foundation so we can deconstruct medicine. And again, this is Medicine Deconstructed. Thanks for being here.